Okay, hello everyone and hello Marcus, you too. Happy World Blown Day 2022. Yes. Was looking forward to this for a long time. <laughs> so I think for the next 40 minutes or so we have a very casual discussion about the very basics of blown, how we how to use blown and what can you do with blown. And my name is Asko Soka. I, I usually work at the University of Jyväskylä. I'm there at the Software Architect, and I've been working with Blown since Blown 1.5, so it's it must be like 19 years already. But for this year, until the end of the year, I'm out of the office. And but right now, I'm joining with you to discuss a little bit Blown to keep give some touch with Blown. So, uh, so Marcus, tell something about you. Something about me. Well, uh, I am open source enthusiast, tech evangelist. I I love to to build stuff, and curious about many 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 tools, especially open source tools. And Plon always pops up on my on my radar. Thanks to you, also. <laughs> uh, so when I follow my Twitter feeds and my LinkedIn feeds, then Plon uh, appears regularly. And recently, I had. Two different projects where I had seen uh, a content management, no, three projects actually, where I had seen a content management system style like, and um, and the the platforms that were there in use, I thought were they were expensive. Well, the one was expensive, the other one was really really old. And the third one, I, I don't even remember. I thought there, maybe there's an easier way. And if Asko always talks about clone, <laughs> there must be something to it. Okay, then let's see what what, what this clone thing is. So <laughs> I guess clone can be also also say that it's it's very very old since it's like 19, 19 years old, and and the technology behind it is is partially even older, and. It's written in Python, so one way to say that the history of Blown is also history history of Python, at least for the early years. But I I think Blown is uh, all in a good way. So it it's it really knows its stuff. So it's a CMS for managing your content, web content or or internet content. And thanks for for its age, it's it's mature and and stable. And well, it, it has like like the features features you need. And still, um, even the uh, golden age of Blown was like uh, maybe 2005 around on, around that time. Um, it's still very much alive, and the community is alive. And they are very. There are next release called Blown Six coming up this year, and it it has very very exciting features. But well, um, let's let's. Let's is create there, a clone. Yeah. Is there a connection between robot framework community and plone community? Um, we had a connection. <laughs> no, because Ed, yes. Ed told yes. me that he met yes. you first at the plone conference and yeah, not at the robot true. framework. Yeah, that was my first plone conference at, at 2011. It was at San, San Francisco. So, and actually, that was the place where I I start learning robot framework. So I, I had to go quite far away to <laughs> learn a uh, <laughs> testing framework that was invented in Finland. <laughs> Amazing. So um, you give me, gave me a nice use case that you were thinking about considering blown as one, one possible option. And that, that sounded like more like a uh, internet use case. But before we go into that, let's create a blown site and, and I tell you some very basics of blown and why it fits quite well in for internet use cases. Mm -hmm. So I, I don't tell anything, anything about uh, how to install a Plon or start Plon so that we can get right into the subject. There are enough documentations for, for making that happen. So Plon 6 comes with um, uh, two, two different versions. There is uh, the, the new Plon with the new front end, then there is a separate Plon front end server and back end server, but now we go forward with the so-called classic blown that, that only has this only has a uh, so-called backend server that's the that's the old classic blown using classic blown we get get sense of the concepts of blown and what, what's great in it okay so let's let's go forward let's set a few settings a little simpler 
So but in Unix and, and UTC, are things simple and, and working. So actually, Paul Clone is running on top of so-called a uh, SOAP, SOAP application server. So it's like layers and layers. This is the, the oldest layer in Clone, this um, SOAP application server layer. And actually, there can be many clone sites on, on this server. But now, usually, it's just, just create one. But the, it, it's also possi possible to have many. And uh, something that makes, I think, the most prominent feature that makes Plone different from all the all the other CMS is that it's it's very inherently um, based on on folders. So everything in Plone, all the content makes one big folder tree. So it's like file system. And and because of that, many many consider Plone uh, friend, user friendly. They understand the concept. So it's like having having folders on your computer, folders and files and folders inside folders and folders inside folders. Mm -hmm. And it's really like that all the way to the database. So Bone comes with its own database. It's called Zob Object Database. And it, uh, it by default, it, it uses so-called file storage that so save the whole database on, the, on single file on, on, on hard disk. It's actually, uh, it's, it's only right on the uh, end of the file mix makes it extremely safe. So you never lose anything until you want to compress the file. That's, mm -hmm. you, I mean, that 20 years ago was like that. It's still quite a modern and nice concept. It's so safe, but also the so-called rail storage that allows you to uh, change that file storage to, to um, relational database. So you, so you can save blown sites also to relational database but stay still, but you still cannot use really those relational features because it's just it's just that object database storage in, the, in the, that relational database. But of course, then you can use the normal backup tools that you may have in the enterprise setup. So it's it's really nice in that. But well, having that having the data model that is like fold, folders and files, and it also it also allows to. Um, very granular permissions. So every folder, every file can have their own, own permissions, completely separate from the each, each other. And and under every folder, there can be different content. So if you are used to a uh, simpler relational model of CMS is where you have just like a big list of pages, and then you assign addresses to those, to those pages. So in, in Plone, instead of that, you have really folders and pages under folders and the, the folder structure you see on, on the blown side, it's the same structure you see on, on, on the address bar. Mm -hmm. So they, they really map to one to one. And the, the only downside of that, that it's really hard in blown to have the same content with different URLs. Mm -hmm. <laughs> because the URL, URL maps one to one to the, to the um, database structure, mm -hmm. but like, and you can have really, really deep folder structure. And at the very end, the last leaf can have completely different, uh, permissions from the others. And, and those are those things that also makes blown very, very nice, nice for internet setups for, or, and also for larger enterprises like universities, universities, you have a lot of, uh, departments and, and fuck. You have faculties in, under the university, and you have departments under the faculties. And you can have very deep your your uh, site structure resembles your your organization structure, and and you really mm -hmm. want to have like subfolders that have completely different access. You don't want to let uh, people from the other department to manage content from the other department. Mm -hmm. And all this is managed in, in folder structures, hierarchies, and it, it's very natural. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay, so that's that. That's blown. So we have folders, and then we can we can create new folders. Let's make a folder. Simple folder. Under folder, we have kind of more folders. Now we see how this is. 
all their names maps of the URL. And then at the very end, we can have, have a page. And on this classic flow, these pages are, are by default quite simple. So we have title, summary, and the body text, normal mm -hmm. reads text. So, so we're very basic. So you can, you can also you can format, format the text usually. The usual tiny MC format thing and nothing special here. And also add images and, and upload the images values in this. This user interface face could could be nicer on this classic phone and it is nicer on the on the new phone. Content comes comes in content types. So we already heard we have folders and, and pages and, and and files and images. Like again that different kind of content. And and different every content can have their own own fields and features and, and representations and so on. Technically, there are just uh, so-called uh, folderish contents, so content that can have content under them, uh, and then leave content that cannot have another content under it, under them. But then, to make it well, also for historical reasons, <laughs> reasons we have had these basic content times from the very beginning of load. Mm -hmm. And of course, you can you and, but you can fully customize what content you have that you have available, and also it, it's possible to customize this customize and create new content types fly just okay. just through the browser. So hopefully we will get there in, soon. And, mm -hmm. and then comes the workflows. So for every content type, you can design a workflow. And and because Blown is most used for for web publishing, the main for the default workflow is so-called publishing workflow that just sets the visibility of the, of that content. So Right now, uh, these pages are, are private by default. So now if I open, open incognito window here and try to open this page, I could get an error. Yes, I, I got the login page. And now if I would log in, then I would be redirected to this page. But now if I publish this page, page and do the same, now I, now I can view the page. And I can even view the page, even I think I cannot view the upper page. So if I have an example folder, I could get the login screen. Mm -hmm. So I was able to publish the page under, make a public page under private folder. Now let's let's go, go to your, your first <laughs> actual requirement. Mm -hmm. So now we can, we know the basics. So you want platform user, users may register. <clears throat> so let us make, make our example blown like site like site like that. At first I need to configure it email server so we can re actually resist, register users. I have our old friend um, mailhook here. Mm -hmm. I see that our, our email connection works. And then we go to blown security. So now we have a fresh blown site with the default content, well, our example folder set up, and we have a mail setup done. And now we enable self-registration. That's of course disabled by default because you don't want accidentally leave it open. Mm -hmm. Yes. Enable self-registration. And make it easier for the new users, we let them let let her use email address as login name, and we generate those technical user IDs for them. So the, so the system will use you, you re, system will internally refer users with UUU IDs, but users can log in their emails. So this is kind of the, the easiest setup for users to log, get log in because they don't they only need to enter their, their email and mm. they don't need to invent username for themselves. Yeah. And everyone gets a folder. Yes. This one is something you need, you want to have later here. So your uh -huh. next, next, next requirement here is to, that every user shall be able to create content. And that's supported by default. Uh, we've blown so-called member folders. So during the first login, user will get their own folder where only they, they can add content. Mm -hmm. 
Okay, so this is, this is our setup. And now we should be able to log out and log in again. Mm -hmm. Let's try it at first with admin user. And we should have this content called more folder for admin. Yes. And now we log out again. So it creates a folder for the admin. By default, it uses the so-called members, members. So it must get a folder under those folders. Folders will become such that this intermediate binary folder called users with, with address members. It's also customizable, but that, that's the default. Let's log out. And now we register to get the, our own user, in, user account with less permissions. Mm -hmm. So thanks to our settings, I only need to enter name and, and email. And now I get email from our phone site. And it email tells me that I need to go there with this secure token that uh, works for, for some amount of hours. And now I can Ooh. finally set the password. OK, another missing feature is by default, clone does not have password policies. So you need to <laughs> try to plug in for, for that. And I failed to. There's one policy. Yes, it, they, they may need to match. <laughs> I managed to do that. Okay. And I need to log in once more to get my folder. Oh, I have, have a folder where only me can create content. So, but your folder is now not connected to the main page, is it? Um, what do you mean by connected? I mean, <clears throat> when when I when I you have this this example page. Yes, and 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 this because... is the example page, the main page, and the user page. Your page should be referenced yes. there. Or? The example page I, I created isn't visible because I didn't make it public. I I left it private, so I cannot mm -hmm. see it. Okay. I even cannot see the see the. Uh, members folder, it's private. I can see only my, my own folder, mm -hmm. but I can publish. Okay. I can only submit <laughs> things for, let, let, okay. Like I, let's make it, I, I submit this. I, I'd like to publish this, this awesome, awesome page here, but mm -hmm. I'm not allowed to make it publish by default with, with the default policy and blown. Of course, of course, all this is customizable even through the browser. So let's log in, log in as an admin. So we see another feature. So okay, now there is somewhere is, is page that it needs approval to be, be published. This classic phone has has old feature called dashboard. <laughs> On the dashboard, there's even older feature called review list. And once I configure it, dashboard will sort of oh there is a page pending. And because mm -hmm. I have I have enough permissions to I, ha I have a re reviewer permissions there enough permissions there I can go there and and approve make it public mm -hmm. and now the page is visible even without even all the other pages are are private. Okay, can I now switch from the because the example page was public? Can I now switch from the from your user page to the example page somehow? You have home, you have news, you have events, but not users. So when I'm an anonymous user, I cannot find your hello world. No, we need to make it visible visible somehow. Mm -hmm. And so let's make it so. As an admin. And one very important feature for discovering content in Flown is collection. Collection, mm -hmm. collection is a save search. It's a page that save, stores save search and it also contains information that is displayed. So you can have different kind of, kind of views displayed. Mm -hmm. So 
a user content called collection. And now we want to show public content from the members folder. So content that has been published. So here we have all the currently available uh, workflow states. The bone clone workflow is so-called stateful workflow. It's like a state machine. State machine. It works for for content types, but not not the content, but not really for processes. So mm -hmm. states and there are transitions between states. Transitions may have conditions, and we have may have triggers configured for the for those transitions. So now we see all the published content here in the previews. We only want to have content from the members folder. So we make location another feature and location. Mm -hmm. Ah. Would be the member folder, I think. So we want only con on users folder, yes, members. So now we have have come make a safe search that only shows content from the user folder. And now if we publish this, because I'm admin, I can directly publish. I don't need to submit for publication at first. Mm -hmm. So you publish it. And now let's see. We still don't need to see it here, but but I think we made it from the root, so we can make this visible also on this. So this port this uh, we call this portal tabs, this green stripe here, a uh, blue stripe here, and it can show content from the uh, portal root, so the site root. But we have configuration somewhere. What kind of content types it will show by default? Let's see if I find it. I think it's in navigation. And here we have displayed content types. I enable a collection and save and refresh. And now we have user content collection mm -hmm. here and it shows my content. And why I went to use it for oh, I, oh, I click. Oh, okay. So there's features that also can show the content by author. So mm -hmm. shows that because we allowed that. That, that that's you know we allowed anonymous to see to, uh, about about information uh, now if i click this off now we should all only see the title i see now we want to be nicer for internet users so now they know the update page by asco and by clicking asco we can see all the content by asco mm -hmm. so Yes, users can create content. And well, Wiki, Blown did have Wiki features. And of course, it has because it, it's so old. But I think um, they were not so much used. And nowadays, they are no longer zipped by default. I'm not sure if that add on is, is supported anymore. Mm -hmm. So, but well, it depends on. What people consider wiki, if if it's enough to just add pages and link those pages, that that also makes wiki wiki mm -hmm. for for some people. So in that sense, I I think it it works really good. You can have interconnected pages, and if that is a wiki, then you can have wiki in flown by default. Do we have Markdown support? We do have. Let's see. Let's see. Awesome. Hopefully. So let's see if I can find it. So we have tiny MC by default. It, it also has support for other, so it's con it's not content, it's it's editing settings. And here we have default tiny MC by default. No, it's not, it was not here. Markup, <laughs> of course. So oh. default format it's still we have something like so restructure text because Python, but it's a bit markdown and intelligent, but something intelligent, intelligent is, is, I think, just plain text that also, but, but it does translate URLs to links. Mm -hmm. But let's see now if that, if that works. So I should have now the markdown enabled and I log in. Tiny MCE is this editor yes. that, that you used. Okay. Yeah. 
and again there's something something new in the in the new user interface something else if you don't like dynamic let's see we don't have markdown enabled so we can switch between HTML that enables DynamC and Markdown. That okay. And cool. Curious. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but it it did it does seem to work. And, uh, yeah. Wow. Uh, Submit for publication, and I go to admin and and publish in dashboard review list. Publish and private for private browser. Here it is. And now, as has made new content, mark an example, and yes, we can view it, and it, it's markdown rendered in the HTML. So we do have markdown support. So awesome. I basically switch between this tiny MCE and Markdown. Or yeah. is... okay, cool. So the blog content stores with the content. It also stores the um, content type. Is it HTML or is it Markdown? Mm -hmm. And then render is properly. Mm -hmm. Okay. Then you had a request for forum and chats, and Blown <laughs> have had both of these at some point. Mm -hmm. But um, then again, nowadays requirements for forums and chat chats are so huge that it no longer makes sense to maintain those yep. in, in the CMS. Yeah. So nowadays there are no no good maintained add-ons for either of those. Mm -hmm. But Blown does have a very basic commenting features. We can demo those. We can en enable commenting. Commenting. It also even supports anonymous commenting and. It can also be work, uh, a review workflow for the comments. So a lot of commenting features. And mm -hmm. so we have global enable for the comments. And then we need, also need to enable con commenting for by content type. And it can even be enabled per content page. So let's see how this be enabled for pages. It's enabled by default. It's not enabled by default. We allow it. So now if I go to that page with Anonymous user should be able to leave comment. <laughs> like that. <laughs> mm -hmm. And this comment could have also review for workflow, so they would not be visible by default, but you would need to go to clone control panel to find the um Somewhere here is page to <laughs> see all the comments that require approval and accept them. Mm -hmm. So that's that's the best what Blown has for, for chats right now. Mm -hmm. So comments. Especially especially with the new user interface, it's easier to integrate external services for for comments and, and uh, mm -hmm. for forums and discussions because it the new inter, new user interface is made with React.js so it supports whole React ecosystems for just plugging in mm -hmm. components that provide those features. So forward users shall find content of their interest easily. Yeah when I when I think about users I think about the uh the one browsing the the the, uh, the generated website itself. So, so not the content creator can find content it's in, he, he or she's interested in, but the the reader of the, of the main yeah. page. So, so I thought must... about something like tagging or labels or. Yes, let's let's try tagging. So Plon Plon has <laughs> all of those <laughs> as expected. Mm -hmm. So there is. Categorization that can have tags, and there's permissions which levels users can add new tags and which can all only use old tags. Mm -hmm. And by default, there comes link for those tags are linked, and by clicking tag, you can see it, it generates search that lists list all the pages with that tag. 
Mm-hmm. And you can also use those tags with, with collections. We can create saved search that, that looks for, for specific tags. It even provides our autocompletions for, for the available tags. Mm-hmm. So now we have have page that, that also has content with certain tag. <clears throat> can I create uh, or can I provide a, a creator site for simple users so that uh, I can imagine that very simple users are overwhelmed by the opportunities that they have in the navigation bar on the left so that they can only create a website and an event and or a website yes. and events. <laughs> yes, you can. <laughs> Let, let's go there next. Cool. So let's do, do, do a little bit clean up at first. So we clean up the users folders and we create our own user folder type. So now we also see that, oh, error. Maybe I have some content there that, that's like locked. So it doesn't allow removing it. Um, I do shortcut by make, going to the old user interface. This is the oldest user interface. <laughs> the Zob application server level user interface. And this had less <laughs> checks, I think. And it allowed me to remember, clean the user interface <laughs> folder. It looks okay. like typo three. <laughs> So now we want a member folder that can also where user can only add uh, like pages and images and nothing nothing else. We do this by making new content types. Let's clone folder content type. Let's make member folder. And well, there are a lot of also options here, like um, name and what kind of fields it has by default. And some of these fields are, we cannot PC, we can edit them because they come from feature called behaviors. The behaviors are, um, they can be collection of fields and they can bring also other dynamic content. They can do, do whatever you can do in code. So you can package, uh, developer can package their code stuff and, and field stuff and everything in the package called behavior and then so-called integrators, it, integrators that only use paid, uh, browser to configure the site can, can enable them here. Like, so, so we know it's like low code. We have hard uh, pro code developers that can provide low code features for these low code oh. sites we are now using. So, so we have mempel folder. It can be like the folder for us, but we only want to allow some content that's below it. So image, page, and member, uh, and, and image and page. Yes, not nothing else right now. And then we also want to have a workflow for it. So we go to, well, we should have a search for all the options here. It, it, you, you really need to learn where are all the options. I know that in the content settings, I have a feature where I can set this um, member folder workflow. So we could make, make it use like, make it use single state workflow. That's only, only private, private state or, or internet. Let's have it. Okay. Let, let's have it in the default workflow. Yeah. Same as everything. So, and now we have created new content. What, what are the different workflows? Is it yeah, like a permission yeah. scheme or something? Yes, let's let's visit that very very quickly. Mm-hmm. So everything, usually everything, is available on this oldest user oldest user interface. We go CMI, so management interface, and that, that flow flow level try to be more user friendly way to configure things here. But it sometimes it's mit- missing some features. So it's under portal for workflow tool. We have these different workflows. So as I mentioned, simple, simple workflow is simple. So as I mentioned, workflows are, are state machines. So we have states, states mm-hmm. control permissions. So every state has has list of permissions it controls. 
okay. and, and, and toggles for those permissions. So whenever content moves to pending state of simple public workflow, these this configuration will be made. So certain roles we will have certain permissions for that content, and the other roles, roles don't have them. So those will be removed. Mm -hmm. And how does the workflow for the intranet look like? Oh, let's see. There are different. I now can folders. imagine that there are so many. And you can create more, more and more and more. So it has, um, it starts with internal draft. Uh... It can be published internally or, or externally. And it seems you need to be first published internally. And once it's internally published, then you can publish it externally. I see. Nice. Five minutes ago, we were creating new content that from member, member folders. We still need to configure on the use this. This mm -hmm. this user interface is not is not visible in the any any of the new user interface. It is only on this oldest one. I I think mm -hmm. here you can choose what is the for content type used for member folders. And now, if I now log in with with my user, I should get the new member folder, which is one of the, our, our new type. And I should be only create content we have decided to allow it. Let's see. It's my folder. I'm not sure which what thing I, I broke. <laughs> I see error here. Yeah. Never never mind. I have on a folder that can only have pages and images. Ah. So now it now it's simpler. But I also broke the front page. Okay. Mm. <laughs> let's let's try one one another, another great feature. Comes with the flow database, which is Undo. It should be all able to undo um, all the way back to what we did. If I only find, I now now this look. Yes, I find the undo that. This shows all the transactions we have done, and now I only need to undo enough. So I in well, undo all the way to the workflow configuration. I think that's probably enough. I don't know what what this this change for. Let's see. We can also undo the undo <laughs> because undo just makes a new transaction. It doesn't remove transactions. As I mentioned, our database only writes at the end of the database. Mm -hmm. So if we can even cut our database from the from the uh, like half, and we start loan, it will start where it was at that point. So it will travel back in time. <laughs> Are there popular uh, platforms or websites that, that run on Plone? That was a hard one, hard one. <laughs> <laughs> Our university site is still running on Plone. <laughs> yes, I've seen that one, I think. It's cool. popular in our town, at least. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, that that's pretty. And it might be that Flow Nork has some success stories somewhere. Can we can, can we help find them? Not not many this time. Yeah, that's at one because Flow is not owned by any single company. Mm -hmm. Then there is no one company to advertise all their custom customers. Yes, so there's no no marketing department or something. <laughs> Let's hope this this helps also others. So thank you, Marcus. Thank you very much, Asko. And thank you all possible Workflow Day watchers, listeners. So have a great Workflow Day from this moment on. And <laughs> have a good night's sleep, Marcus. See you, you too. soon in Robot Framework Things. Yes. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.